Hello, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. And this Bible study is going to be on the mystery of Melchizedek. He was the king of Salem. Now, the word Salem means peace. The Jews call it Shalom. And in the King James, they call it Salem. You've heard of Salem, Massachusetts, you know. Sometimes I wonder, do the Jews put their emphasis on these words for a reason? I mean, just so that we don't know what it is they're saying, so that we don't connect Shalom with Salem? I mean, it sounds like two totally different words, doesn't it? Shalom and Salem. Which one's right? I don't know. You know, I uh, I don't speak Hebrew, and I'll tell you what, neither do the great majority of Eastern European Jews. They don't speak Hebrew either. They speak Yiddish, which is not Hebrew. Because, I'll tell you what, take your Old Testament, get an Old Testament in Hebrew, hand it to one of them and ask them to read it and translate it in English and they can't do it because it they they just they can't read Hebrew. It looks like Hebrew. There's some words that sounds like Hebrew, but the words are not the same. So I kind of wonder. All right. Now, Salem was the name before they changed the name to Jerusalem, which means, uh, so Salem means peace, just like Shalom, and then Jerusalem means teaching of peace or city of peace, depending upon who or what you, you know, talk to. So, now, in Genesis, you had Abraham, he went to uh, see Melchizedek, the king of Salem. But in the days of after Moses died and then Joshua took over, they went to Jerusalem and it was inhabited by families of the Canaanites. So let's take a look at that real quick. All right, in Joshua 15, 18. Uh, let's see. Let's see, and the border went up by the valley of the son of Hinnom unto the south side of the Jebusite. The same as Jerusalem, and the border went up to the top of the mountain that lieth before the valley of Hinnom westward, which is at the end of the valley of the giants northward. So this area is tied in with the giants, you know, Goliath and what have you. So, all right, so let's take a look at some more. Well, let's see. All right, now, let's turn to Joshua 10.1. Now, Joshua took over from Moses after Moses, uh, Moses sinned, and he wasn't allowed to cross over the river. I believe it was the Jordan, if I remember correctly. And then Joshua took over for Moses. And Moses was pretty old, too, you know? So now he's fighting with the Canaanite tribes to take the land promised to Israel. Joshua 10.1. Now it came to pass when Adozadek, king of Jerusalem, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, king of Jerusalem had heard how Joshua had taken Ai and had utterly destroyed it. See, Israel was commanded to utterly destroy the Canaanites. As he had done to Jericho and her king, so he had done to Ai and her king, and how the inhabitants of Gibeon had made peace with Israel and were among them, that they feared greatly because Gibeon was a great city as one of the royal cities, and because it was greater than Ai, and all the men thereof were mighty. Therefore, wherefore, Adonizedek, king of Jerusalem, sent unto Hoham, king of Hebron, and unto Piram, king of Jarmuth, and unto 
Jephiah, king of Lashish, and unto Debir, king of Eglon, saying, Come up to me and help me, that we may smite Gibeon, for it hath made peace with Joshua and with the children of Israel. So, see, Jerusalem here is inhabited by the Canaanite tribes, and they're fighting. They're going, they know they're going to end up in a fight with Israel and with Joshua. Okay? Verse 5. Therefore, the five kings of the Amorites, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, and the king of Lashish, the king of Eglon, gathered themselves together and went up, they and all their hosts, and encamped before Gibeon and made war against it. And the men of Gibeon sent unto Joshua to the camp, to Gilgal, saying, Slack not thy hand from thy servants. Come up to us quickly and save us and help us, for all the kings of the Amorites that dwell in the mountains are gathered together against us. So Joshua ascended from Gilgal, he and all the people of war with him, and all the mighty men of valor. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear them not, for I have delivered them into thine hand. There shall not a man of them stand before thee. Joshua therefore came unto them suddenly and went up from Gilgal at night. And the Lord discomforted them before Israel and slew them with a great slaughter at Gibeon and chased them along the way that goeth to Beth Horon, and smote them to Azekah and unto Makedah. Oh, some of these names. And it came to pass as they fled from before Israel and were in the going down to Beth Horon that the Lord cast down great stones from heaven upon them. The Lord cast down great stones from heaven upon Azekah, and they died. And they were more which died with hailstones than they whom the children of Israel slew with the sword. So you could keep reading this, but the, you know, the Lord commanded Israel utterly wipe out these people. So why am I telling you all this about Jerusalem? Now, if you'll remember... Jerusalem is God's holy city. Didn't always act holy. So, all right. But my point is, Jerusalem is Salem. Let's go to Psalms 76.1. To the chief musician on Neginoth, a psalm or song of Asaph. In Judah is God known, his name is great in Israel. In Salem also is his tabernacle. Hmm. In Judah is God known, his name is great in Israel. In Salem also is his tabernacle and his dwelling place in Zion. So they're talking about Judah. They're talking about God is known. His name is great in Israel. In Salem also is his tabernacle and his dwelling place in Zion. That's Jerusalem, people. So Salem was the name before they changed the name to Jerusalem. If you want, read Psalm 76.1. Okay? So think about that. All right, so... and Because I just saw a comment uh, that somebody said that Salem and Jerusalem were not the same. Well... God's tabernacle is in Salem. God's tabernacle is in Jerusalem. So evidently it's the same. All right. All right. Uh, let's turn to Genesis chapter 14. We're going to talk about the Abraham, well, Abram, and Lot. Now a little background. The... There were some people, they uh, attacked Sodom, and Lot was living there. And they took Lot as captive, as a slave. They were going to sell him. So Abraham decided, up, oh, we're not going to do that. So, all right, so uh, let's go to Genesis 14.10. 
And the vale of Siddim was full of slime pits, and the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled and fell there, and they that remained fled to the mountains. And they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their victuals and went their way. And they took Lot, Abraham's, I'm sorry, Abram's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom and his goods, and departed. So here it is, these atta uh, people attacked Sodom, and they took Lot, Abraham's brother's son, and um, they took him and all his stuff, and they took off. Verse 13, And there came one that had escaped and told Abram, the Hebrew, for he dwelt in the plain of Mamre, the Amorite brother of Eshel and brother of Aner, and these were confederate with Abram. Confederate means, you know, friends, I guess. And when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants, born in his own house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. And he divided himself against them, he and his servants, by night, and smote them, and pursued them unto Hobah, Hobah which is on the left hand of Damascus. And he brought back all the goods, and also brought again his brother Lot, and his goods, and the women also, and the people. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of Chedorlaomer, or something like that. And of the kings that were with him in the valley of Shaveh, which is the king's dale. All right. So Abram took, what is it, 318 of his servants, armed them, and they went and attacked these people that had attacked Sodom and took all the stuff and Lot and I guess what whatever his friends and family and everybody. So Abram attacks them. Overcomes him, gets back Lot, gets back all the stuff, and he's coming back. All right, Genesis 14, 16. And he brought back all the goods and also brought again his brother Lot and his goods and the women also and the people. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of Chedorlaomer or something like that. And of the kings that were with him in the valley of Shaveh, which is the king's dale. And Melchizedek, king of Salem. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine. And he was the priest of the most high God. So here it is. You got a Melchizedek is a king, king of peace. Salem means peace. Melchizedek, king of peace. He brings forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. Mm. Keep that in mind. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God. God, possessor of heaven and earth. And he blessed, and blessed be the most high God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thine hand. And he gave him tithes of all. In other words, Abram gave him tithes. And the king of Sodom said unto Abram, Give me the persons and take the goods to thyself. And Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have lift up mine hand unto the Lord, the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth that I will not take from a thread even to a shoe latchet, and that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou shouldest say, I have made Abram rich, save only that which the young man of Eden and the portion of the men which went with me, Aner, Ishal, and Mamre, let them take their portion. So, so here it is, Melchizedek is the king of king of Salem, peace. He brought forth bread and wine, and he was a priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. Very important. 
So here we have a priest and a king. All right, so Melchizedek brought bread and wine to Abram, right? In John 6.33, For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Right? For the bread of life is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then they then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I say unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Hmm. In John 6, 48, Jesus said, I am that bread of life. And in John 6, 51, he says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. Isn't that interesting? Melchizedek, a king and a priest, brought forth bread and wine. So what about the wine? All right, in Mark 26, 26, and they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine. Probably wine, maybe, maybe not. Some argue grape juice, that's fine. Until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. So isn't that interesting? That Melchizedek brought bread and wine. See, Jesus is going to be a high priest and a king. Hebrews 7.1, For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also, King of Salem, which is King of Peace, without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. Now consider how great this man was, unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave a tenth of the spoils. Hmm. So, think about that. And verily that are those the sons of Levites who receive the office of the priesthood, have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law, that is, of their brethren, though they come out of the loins of Abraham. But he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham and blessed him that had the promises. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. And here men that die receive tithes, but there he receiveth them of whom it is witnessed that he liveth. So, here it is. Melchizedek. Was that Christ before he was in human form? Some people say it was. Others say he was a type of Christ. You know, he's a priest. And he's a king. I guess we won't know until we get into the kingdom. So, all right, well, this is uh, 
Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries, John 8:12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. In Jesus' precious name, amen.